Have you ever wondered, what's it like to be a scientist? There are so many different answers to that question. My name is Paige, and I'm part of a team of scientists who all work together in a group called the Center for Sustainable Nanotechnology, or the CSN. The team of scientists in the CSN all have different roles in exploring the sustainable use of nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is an amazing area of science that uses teeny tiny particles. These particles are so small that over 1,000 of them can fit across the width of a single human hair. Nanoparticles are really unique and can be used in all kinds of different applications from medicine to batteries to farming. One reason I love nanoscience is because of their nano size, nanoparticles have unexpected abilities compared to their bigger selves. For example, gold nanoparticles aren't gold colored but range from purple to red. In the CSN, we ask a lot of questions like, what happens when the nanoparticles in your phone battery escape into a lake after you've thrown it away? And how can we improve farming and food production with nanoparticles? We have scientists from all over the country working to answer these questions. So what's it like to be a scientist in the Center for Sustainable Nanotechnology? Here are a few of my friends to tell you about what they do as part of our team. My name is Levi, and I like to look at single nanoparticles. Now, because nanoparticles are so tiny, I have to design custom instruments to be able to look at them. This involves making my own electronic circuits, aligning my own lasers, and writing my own computer code. And I do all this work because by studying nanoparticles one at a time, I can uncover unique and interesting information about their chemistry and physics. And then this information can be used to design better nanoparticles in the future. I'm QC. Uh, I'm most excited about uh, developing computational uh, and theoretical models that can tell us how nanoparticles interact with biomolecules and how such interactions uh, can really impact the properties of both nanoparticles and the biomolecules. And we use both quantum and classical models and uh, we use uh, both atomistic and the coarse grain descriptions uh, whenever uh, it's appropriate. And we really uh, enjoy interactions with our experimental colleagues because experiments keep us honest. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm a chemist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I'm really interested in studying the surfaces of nanoparticles. Nanoparticles are so small in size that a large fraction of their atoms that they're made up of are actually exposed to the surface. For that reason, it's so important to understand their surface chemistry so that we can understand how they might impact our health or even our environment. One tool I use in the lab to study nanoparticle surfaces uses X-ray radiation, which interacts with the surface of sample differently depending on what it's made of. You can see a picture of the instrument that I use behind me. Hi, I'm Sophia and I work with 2D nanomaterials. You're probably used to hearing about 3D or three dimensions of length, width, and height. Working with 2D materials means that my materials are so thin, they essentially lose a dimension and only have length and width. 2D materials are becoming really popular in the technology we use, and there are even some in your cell phone. I'm really interested in preserving the environment, and so I'm working to find out what these materials will do to the environment when we inevitably throw them away in products we use. Hi, I'm Zach, and I really like puzzles and figuring out how things work. My research involves figuring out how to make scientific instruments measure the things that we're interested in. So I'm trying to figure out uh, where in plants and animals nanomaterials might end up and how we can measure where they go. Hopefully this gives us some information about what it is about some nanomaterials that has good or bad outcomes within organisms. Hi, I'm Alessandra and I do chemical biology. I think it's really cool to explore how nanomaterials interact with bacteria. Although most of the time we think of about bacteria being germs, bacteria are actually really important for a healthy ecosystem. 
Because nanomaterials are so small, they can have a serious impact on the bacteria if they're accidentally released into the environment. Hi, my name is Beza and I'm a chemistry graduate student at the University of Minnesota. I'm really excited about using tiny particles known as nanoparticles to help plants protect themselves against diseases. This work is really important because our world's population is constantly growing and we need to find creative solutions to improve our food production capabilities. Hi, my name is Tana and I'm a materials chemist. I make some really small nanoparticles and study their impacts on plants. My nanoparticles look like wiffle balls with a large pore on the inside and these smaller pores on their surface. We are able to load these nanoparticles with some small molecules and with the help from our collaborators we can apply them to some plants. When applied to the plants, the nanoparticles release the small molecules and help provide nutrients to help plants grow big and strong. Hi, I'm Wade Elmer and I'm the Vice Director of the Connecticut Ag Experiment Station. I'm also the plant pathologist, head of the Department of Plant Pathology and Ecology. My interest is primarily in how mineral nutrition affects soil-borne diseases. And in this area, I've been very interested in how nanoparticles can, can be used to enhance the, the um, health of plants. By spraying them onto the leaves, we're able to get effects there. Hello, my name is Jason White. I'm the director of the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station. And I have a research program on using nanoscale nutrients to increase agricultural productivity specifically looking at how we can tune these materials to optimize the benefit to, uh, to our plants. One of the most significant challenges we'll face in the next 30 years is global food insecurity and coming up with safe and sustainable ways to use nanotechnology to increase food production will be a significant part of the solution to that problem. This is Yushen. I'm a postdoc researcher in Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station. With the guidance of Dr. Jason White and Dr. Wade Elmer. My research interest is about the application of nanoparticles to improve crop resilience in agriculture. Currently, I'm investigating the mechanism of corporate nanoparticles attachment to and absorption across a unique hydrophobic surface in the environment. Hi, my name is Christy Haynes, and I'm a chemistry professor at the University of Minnesota. For right now, I'm doing my work from home. I'm really passionate about chemistry that interfaces with biology and with nanoscale materials. And my main job is that I get to advise undergraduate and graduate students as they take on cutting edge research projects. Overall, my research group works together to develop new materials or gain new chemistry understanding that will benefit people and the environment. We also work hard to develop skills so that the next generation of chemists is better at communicating their science to the public. And we work to engage the public, especially children, with important scientific concepts. Thanks for coming along for this quick tour of our Center for Sustainable Nanotechnology team. We hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about nanotechnology, as well as seeing a few examples of what it's like to be a scientist. Want to learn more about nanotechnology and the CSN? Visit our blog at sustainable-nano.com or check us out on Twitter at, at sustainablenano.